Yo, so I really want to cop at least one more video today. So let's get at it and blaze through it. What you're looking at is the project file that by now you should have access to it. If you missed the previous video for any reason, you only got to know two things. Number one, you can get this project file for free and tag along. The only thing that you have to do is follow the link in the description, which will take you to ArtStation. And from there, you can download this file. Number two, this is part of a series of videos that I have organized in a playlist and so also in the description you can find a link to that playlist and the previous video was all about getting this file and what is our station so if you're like what what's our station well there's a video about that and it's the one before this one okay moving forward um by now you know that this right here is the 3d viewport and right now you are looking at it from the perspective of a camera which i have set up now you might ask why does it look gray it looks gray because right now we are in a viewport shading that is called solid. So these four dots over here are the topic of today's video. The viewport shading is four ways in which you can visualize the 3D content in your scene. The default one is the solid one, which displays everything in gray. If you want to see colors, you can move to the next one, to the right, which is the material preview. And now we got some color, but you might notice that it kind of looks slightly different from what you have seen in previous videos. And the reason for that is that when you are in material preview, you are getting a sense of what the applied materials are, what the textures look like. However, the realism of it, it's kind of curbed down because what is happening is that you are in fact in a preview mode that is supposed to give you enough information so that you can kind of look at textures and work with them and know what's up. But at the same time, um, you don't have something that is extremely computationally intense. What does computationally intense mean? It means that when you move to the next step, which is the rendered version, this is more expensive for your computer to render. It takes more calculations. It takes more power and therefore when you have scenes that are really complex, really heavy on textures, it ends up being kind of slow. And also it's no longer real time. It's very difficult for the machine to keep up and make it look real time. Okay. Now you might notice that we had skip one, which is the one to the far left. And that is the wireframe preview. Now, when you're looking things at the wireframe, you are looking at a representation that is the cheapest possible in terms of computational expense. And it's providing you information about the geometry. However, we will go more in detail about what's the geometry in the first place in a later video. So, at this stage, the only thing that you need to know about wireframe, it is that it is a really, really, really basic way of visualizing 3D information. Although the default one, 
which I would consider the most basic that is still providing you visual information is the solid one. Cool, now you might notice that there is also a little arrow to the right and that gives you extra options. And not everyone knows about this, but you can actually change and customize the viewport shading in the solid mode. Now, depending on which viewport shading you have selected, the options are going to be slightly different and they're going to be relevant to that one shading that you have selected. Starting with the viewport solid shading, there are a lot of options, but what you should know is that you can change the color of the solid representation. And one that I frequently use is that I go to matte cap, okay, and then I select one of these previews. The most useful, in my opinion, are the black one, which is this one, which sometimes is helpful when you need some more contrast between the outlines and the geometry that you're working with. Next, another one that is kind of useful is this one that helps you really look at the shining points or how the light interacts with the uh, object, how it falls and curves around the volume, the surface. And a few more that I really like or use are this one, which is kind of a sand color. This one, which is very, very frequently used in sculpting, although it's not one of my favorites. And then this one, which just looks so sleek. And probably this one for metal. Now, there are many more. I invite you to play with all of them. I surely did at some point. And uh, there's one more option, which is flat, which of course looks kind of flat and cartoony and for good reason. So later on, we're going to learn about things that you can do to make things look like they are in 2D. And this is going to play a role into it. And then also going back to the studio lighting, you can also change that, but notice that as you move around, the options that you have change. Next is the material preview. And once again, if you click on the little arrow, what you're going to notice is that you have options, although now they are different. So one thing that you can do is click on this sphere and what you will be able to do is change the environment that is around the scene. So for example, as you change the environment, you're going to see that one, the reflections are changing and two, the lighting is changing. That is because when you change the environment, you are changing what is called an HDRI which is like the world in which your scene exists or in which your scene is previewed. Or at least this is a definition that is good enough for the moment for you. And another one that I use frequently is the studio lighting, which looks way dramatic and also has lighting as it would be in a photography studio, for example. And then, if I'm not mistaken, this one is also pretty good. Yeah. Uh, now, what you can do here is also play with these values. Uh, most importantly, the rotation, which is going to rotate the world. Right? So right now, the world is rotating around your tree scene. And this option is used 
to alter the direction from which the lighting is coming, right? So as you might have noticed, as I move the degrees of rotation, the lighting also changes, not just the reflections. Two more options that are available are to toggle the scene lights and the scene world, which I have already set up for you. So if you toggle them, you are going to have something that looks very, very similar to the rendered preview because now we are using the actual lights and the actual HDRI that I have set up in the 3D viewport. Whereas when we're using this one, we are kind of using the same kind of material, but it's part of a default package that comes with Blender and that is kind of less computationally expensive to give you a preview. Cool. Moving forward, we are finally in the rendered section, in the rendered viewport mode. And once again, you are going to see that you have the same options. And if you untoggle them, what's happening is that you're going to a situation that is the equivalent of the previous one. Okay, so that is kind of the difference between the two, that when you have the preview material selected, you are most likely operating in one of these default presets, okay? And then when you go here, you have the same lights and the same world toggled, and those are going to be the kind of information that Blender uses to render out the scene. All right, that wraps it up for this video. This is a good introduction to the viewport shading modes. There is more to learn, but definitely like now you know a little bit more.